Welcome to a new video series on this channel where we will focus on the mathematical concepts behind quadcopter drone control. Today we will have a look at how you can mathematically simulate the motor and sensor characteristics of your quadcopter. Previous video series focused on building and programming a fully open source quadcopter drone. We combined and programmed a radio control system, flight controller and powertrain. When we developed our PID controller, we saw different numbers for the P, I and D values. These were different for the three flight controllers that we developed together. Rate mode, angle mode and vertical velocity mode. At the time, I did not explain how you can obtain these optimal P, I and D values because it requires non-trivial mathematical operations. Calculating the optimal P, I and D values will be the goal of this video series. To calculate the values, we will need to mathematically characterize the control loop that you see on screen. In this video, we will start with mathematically simulating the brushless motor. First, we will develop a static motor model and subsequently we will model the dynamics of the motor as well. Let's start with the static motor model, where we will try to develop two equations giving the motor thrust and consumed current in function of the throttle. For our drone, we used four GEPRC 1105 brushless motors rated at 5000 kV. These can be easily bought online for around $10 per piece. Equally important are the propellers that you choose, because they will influence the motor characteristics. The standard prop for this application is the 3 inch Gemfan 3018, easily available online as well. We will test our motor, propeller and ESC combination using a custom made test bench, which is powered by a power supply to control the supply voltage and to easily monitor the consumed current. A load cell with an amplifier, a TNC for the motor control and an LCD display to monitor the thrust and the throttle completes the setup. Notice that our setup already consumes some current, even though the motor has not yet started. Let's start the motor and softly increase the throttle by turning the control knob. The throttle is visualized on the LCD display together with the thrust, which will increase with the pulling force of the motor. We will now try to increase the motor throttle to around 1400 microseconds or 40%. At this point we will read the consumed current and the thrust. Once we reached the power level of 40%, we see that this corresponds with a thrust of 62 grams and a current of almost 2 amps. 62 grams is also the exact thrust that we need to keep the quadcopter floating in the air, because 4 times 62 equals 250 grams, which is the total weight of our drone. Doing the same measurements at different power levels allows you to create a graph like the one in blue on the screen where you can evaluate the motor thrust in function of the throttle. When you would test another motor and propeller combination, such as the 1206 motor with a three-bladed three-inch propeller, you will get a different graph with higher thrust. The main reason for this higher thrust is the fact that you use a three-bladed propeller. We can simplify this graph by assuming it to be purely linear which results in a thrust that is equal to 160 times the throttle, where the throttle is a value between 0 and 1. Let's repeat this by plotting the consumed current in function of the throttle. Because you also consume some current when the motor is not turning, the resulting linear equation is a little bit more complicated. But in essence, the current is more or less 4 times the throttle value between 0 and 1 meaning that the consumed current at full throttle is around 4 amps per motor. Dividing the thrust by the current at each point gives you the efficiency of the motor. Notice that the motor efficiency for a two-bladed propeller is higher than for the three-bladed propeller, meaning that your flight time increases when using a two-bladed prop. Now that we have our static motor model, let's continue with the motor dynamics. To evaluate how fast our motors respond to a different throttle signal, let's create a motor power command that goes instantaneously from 11.5% of throttle to 
We will record the sound during the step in motor power and plot the sound wave amplitude on this graph. The power step is generated automatically by our TNC to be able to generate a pure step response. When we subsequently plot the sound wave amplitude over time, you see that the motor does not instantaneously reach us a higher amplitude and thus that it takes some time before the motor delivers the required speed and thrust. To characterize the time delay more accurately, you will not look at the amplitude change, but at the frequency change of the sound during acceleration. Let's now take a fast Fourier transform to transform the sound signal from the time domain to the frequency domain. By doing this, you will lose the information on the time. So let's do it first for the part at which the motor turns stationary at 11.5% of throttle. You know that your motor has a 5000 kV rating. Since kV is the equivalent of RPM per volt, and the test was done with a constant battery voltage of 7.8 volt, your motor frequency at full throttle will be equal to 650 Hz. Since your propeller has two blades, the frequency of the sound emitted by the propellers will be equal to 2 times 650 Hz or 1300 Hz at full throttle and without losses. At 11.5% of motor power, the fast Fourier transform gives its first peak at 280 Hz, which is the frequency at which the motor turns. At exactly 2 times 280 Hz, you have the peak from the sound emitted by the two-bladed propeller. Further in the spectrum, some small additional peaks are recorded at equal intervals. They represent the propeller excitation frequencies. Let's take a second fast Fourier transform at 50% motor power. You see that the spectrum is shifted, with the motor frequency that has risen from 280 Hz to 400 Hz, and a propeller frequency of 800 Hz. In the higher frequency ranges, you find once again the propeller excitation frequencies. While the fast Fourier transform reveals the motor frequency, all information with regard to time is lost. This can be solved with the so-called spectrogram, which allows you to follow the change in frequency over time. We know that the motor frequency started at 280 Hz and ended at 400 Hz. Using the spectrogram, we see that it takes 90 milliseconds for the motor to accelerate to 400 Hz. Now how can we translate this time into an equation? This is done using a transfer function. The motor behavior resembles a first order response to a step input. Consider a general example in which the step input command of 1 is given at a time of 0 seconds to your motor. The first order response of the motor using one time related parameter ta is given by the equation on the screen. Ta is defined as the time at which the motor output reaches 95% of the desired value, divided by 3. This means that at 95, 86 and 63, the pass time will be respectively 3, 2 and 1 seconds when ta is equal to 1. If ta is higher, for example 2, the motor response will be twice as slow as shown on the graph in green. For our motor, this gives a time parameter ta that is equal to 90 milliseconds divided by 3 or 0.03 seconds. For further calculations, your transfer function needs to be written in the frequency domain, not the time domain. This means that you need a Laplace transform of the transfer function. Through this notation, you will use s, which is not a unit of time, but a complex number with a form highlighted on the screen. One of the properties of the Laplace transform is that 1 in the time domain becomes 1 divided by s in the frequency domain, and that an exponential becomes 1 divided by s added with the argument of the exponential. Using these properties, you can easily transform the transfer function to the frequency domain. Rewriting the equation a bit gives you a very simple transfer function. You can still get rid of the input divided by s because this represents a unit step input, which was considered for this example. In reality, you can have any input that you want, 
So by deleting the one divided by s, you get the final transfer function for a first order response. For our motor and propeller combination, tau was equal to 0.03 seconds, which allows us to characterize the motor dynamics in our control loop diagram by a very simple equation in the frequency domain, as illustrated on the screen. We will continue with the sensor dynamics, which will be very similar to the motor dynamics. In the datasheet of our MPU6050 gyroscope and accelerometer, we see that the sampling frequency can be up to 8 kHz. However, we used a digital low-pass filter to eliminate unwanted noise with a cutoff frequency of 10 Hz. The transfer function of a low-pass filter in the frequency domain is a first-order response as well, with the difference that tau is equal to 1 divided by omega c, which can be transformed to the equation seen on screen. Omega c is equal to 2 multiplied with pi, multiplied with the cutoff frequency of 10 Hz, giving the frequency domain transfer function shown on the screen. This means that we can characterize the sensor dynamics in our control loop diagram as well. In the next video, we will try to develop the transfer function for the dynamics of our quadcopter drone itself. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full drone code on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.